أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغلوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مكمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبسرون وسواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليه مثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أأتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بضر لا تغني عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ضلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل دخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين 
وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من الكرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالعرجون القديم للشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها معرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أنطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينذرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توسية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في السور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام 
قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن يعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون إصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفلون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبسرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينكرون صرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إن نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم يرى الإنسان أن خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العظيم اللهم آمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحيم 
اللهم إنا نحتفظك ونستودعك أدياننا وأبداننا وأنفسنا وأهلنا وأولادنا وأولادنا وأموالنا وكل شيء أعطيتنا اللهم اجعلنا وإياهم في كنفك وأمانك وعياذك من كل شيطان مريد وجبار عنيد وذي بغي وذي حسد ومن شر كل ذي شر إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم جملنا بالعافية والسلام وحققنا بالتقوى والاستقامة وأعذنا من موجبات الندامة إنك سميع الدعاء اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وأولادنا ومشايخنا وأصحابنا وإخواننا في الدين ولمن أحبنا فيك ولمن أحسن إلينا والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على عبدك ورسولك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وارزقنا كمال المتابعة له ظاهرا وباتنا في عافية وسلامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله يا الله يا الله ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه يجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم آمين 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 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما تقدموا لأنفسكم من خير تجدوه عند الله هو خيرا وأعظم أجرا واستغفر الله إن الله غفور رحيم استغفر الله 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 
Astaghfirullah <laughs> إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بقدر عظمة ذاتك في كل وقت وحين فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله 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 سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فاخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا وقالوا حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل 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 فانقلبوا بنعمة من الله وفضل لم يمسسهم سوء 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا علي يا عظيم يا حليم يا عليم أنت ربي وعلمك حسبي فنعم الرب ربي ونعم الحسب حسبي تنسر من تشاء وأنت العزيز الرحيم نسألك العزمة في الحركات والسكنات والكلمات والإرادات والخطرات من الشكوك والذنون والأوهام الساترة للقلوب عن مطالعة الغيوب فقد ابتلي المؤمنون وزلزلوا زلزالا شديدا وإذ يقول المنافقون والذين في قلوبهم مرض ما وعدنا الله ورسوله إلا غرورا فثبتنا وانصرنا وسخر لنا هذا البحر كما سخرت البحر لموسى وسخرت النار لإبراهيم وسخرت الجبال والحديد لداود وسخرت الريح والشياطين والجن لسليمان وسخر لنا كل بحر هو لك في الأرض والسماء والملك والملكوت وبحر الدنيا وبحر الآخرة وسخر لنا كل شيء يا من بيده ملكوت كل شيء كاف ها يا عين صاد كاف ها يا عين صاد كاف ها يا عين صاد انصرنا فإنك خير الناصرين وافتح لنا فإنك خير الفاتحين واغفر لنا فإنك خير الغافرين وارحمنا فإنك خير الراحمين وارزقنا فإنك خير الرازقين واهدنا ونجنا من القوم الظالمين وهب لنا ريحا طيبة كما هي في علمك وانشرها علينا من خزائن رحمتك واحملنا بها حمل الكرامة مع السلامة والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم يسر لنا أمورنا 
مع الراحة لقلوبنا وأبداننا والسلامة والعافية في دنيانا وديننا وكن لنا صاحبا في سفرنا وخليفة في أهلنا واطمس على وجوه أعدائنا وامسخهم على مكانتهم فلا يستطيعون المضيء ولا المجيء إلينا ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبسرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مكمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبسرون شاهت الوجوه شاهت الوجوه شاهت الوجوه وعنت الوجوه للحي القيوم وقد خاب من حمل ظلما طاسين حاميم عين قاف مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان حاميم 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 هم الأمر وجاء النصر فعلينا لا ينصرون حاميم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز العليم غافر الذنب وقابل الطوب شديد العقاب ذي التون لا إله إلا هو إليه المصير بسم الله بابنا تبارك حيطاننا ياسين سقفنا كاف ها يا عين صاد كفايتنا حاميم عين سين قاف حمايتنا فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم فسيكفيكهم الله وهو السميع العليم ستر العرش مسبول علينا 
وعين الله ناظرة إلينا بحول الله لا يقدر علينا والله من ورائهم محيط بل هو قرآن مجيد في لوح محفوظ فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لطيف بعباده يرزق من يشاء وهو القوي العزيز يا لطيف 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 يا لط
latif ya 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 Latif, 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 Ya Ultuf bina ya latif ya alim ya khabir Ya latifan bi khalqihi ya aliman bi khalqihi ya khabiran bi khalqihi Ultuf bina ya latif ya alim ya khabir يا لطيفا بخلقه يا عليما بخلقه يا خبيرا بخلقه ألطف بنا يا لطيف يا عليم يا خبير اللهم يا من لطفت في خلق السماوات والأرض ولطفت بالأجنة في بتون أمهاتها ألطف بنا لطفا يليك بكرمك ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله اللهم يا من جعلت الصلاة على النبي من القربات نتقرب إليك بكل صلاة سلنيت عليه من أول النشأة إلى ما لا نهاية من الكمالات بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يسوق الخير إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا يصرف السوء إلا الله بسم الله ما شاء الله وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك 
اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك إن شاء الله نتنوى الذكر جامعة لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما وسعاه علم الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله في كل لمحة ونفس عدد ما 
وسيعه علم الله إن شاء الله ميك دعانا اللهم آمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما بركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for our Shaykh, teacher, murshid, and master, Sayyidina Shaykh Faisal Hamid Abdul Razak. O oh Allah, may you increase him in knowledge and wisdom. O oh Allah, may you protect him from evil, and we pray that he will lead his marids on the straight path towards you. O oh Allah, we pray for the Shaykh and his family. We pray that you strengthen them in iman, keep them in good health, and grant them long life in Islam. O oh Allah, we pray that you protect them from all evil, ease their trials, and grant them the sweetness of paradise. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allah forgive us for our sins and guide us on the straight path leading to paradise. O oh Allah, you know the needs of all of us present here. O oh Allah, answer our dawn and take care of our needs. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for our parents that you grant them your grace and mercy as they raised us in childhood. O oh, oh Allah, grant our parents long life and good health in Islam. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive our parents and grant them paradise. O oh Allah, for our parents who have passed away and returned to you, O oh Allah, we beg you to forgive them. O oh Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for all the murids of Shaykh Faisal throughout the world. O oh Allah, we pray that you ease our trials and, us, and grant us the strength to face our trials. O oh Allah, make it easy for us to gain true knowledge and to practice it, to be good murids and to get ever closer to you. O oh Allah, you know the needs of all of the murids. O oh Allah, we beg you to answer our, our dua and take care of our needs. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for all the Muslims around the world. O oh Allah, we pray that you strengthen us in Iman. O oh Allah, we pray for unity and to make us stronger as a nation. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please comfort and relieve all Muslims who are suffering and have suffered losses. O oh Allah, you are the all-powerful and the almighty. O oh Allah, we beg you to give us victory against the unbelievers. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray for the International Islamic Forum and the Al-Fasr and Dhikr Halaqa. May you make it easy for us to establish many messages for your sake. May you bless the Islamic Forum and the Al-Fasr and the Halakha to be, a beacon of, to be a beacon of light for Islam throughout the world. And may help us to finish building the new message soon and make it easy for us to do so. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadan wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursani walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله 
Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Walillahi Alhamd Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Walillahi Alhamd Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Walillahi Alhamd Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Walillahi Alhamd Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Walillahi Alhamd Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Walillahi Alhamd A'udhu Billahi Samil Alim Minash Shaitan Rajeem Bismillahi Rahman Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'im wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluh Allahumma fta' alayna futuha al-arifim wa wafiqna tawfiq al-salihin wa anfa'ana Allahumma bil-Qur'ani wa al-dhikr al-hakim اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعليما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا 
اللهم أعزنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين آمين أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters My dear Mureeds السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. And welcome once again to our special daily broadcast, the special blessed program coming to you from the Islamic Forum of Canada, where we share with you this message of mercy from God Almighty to all of His creation. We thank you for joining our program today. Remember, this program starts at 7 p.m. Toronto time, coming to you from our Zawiya here at the Islamic Forum of Canada. Uh, we kindly request you to reach out to others, uh, your family members, your relatives, your friends, other Muslims you know, and encourage them to watch the program, 7 p.m. Toronto time. Share the YouTube link with them, inshallah. They watch the program, they will benefit from the program and you will receive increased blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, we kind of request you to enter your information in, into the chat, your name and the city where you're from and your response to the different projects. Uh, we want to uh, make special dua today in our program for all our donors, all those who donated today, yesterday and before, all our donors without exception. We make special of all of them, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their families, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their loved ones because of their donation to the Islamic Forum. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase them uh, in his sustenance, in his risk, increase their wealth uh, because of their donation to the Islamic Forum. Uh, once again, we remind you that uh, our focus on this program, our interest, it is your safety, your well-being, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can keep you in the best of states in Afia, firstly, and then secondly, your spirituality, your connection, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the different items of this, pro this program, they are geared towards achieving these two main focus of our program, your safety and your well-being, as well as your spirituality. We have several projects that uh, we, we are encouraging you to participate in, to be an active part of. Uh, the, the Quran project for you to recite the Quran every day, at least one page, a Salawat project, you recite Salawat on the Prophet every day, the gratitude project to, uh, you know, every day uh, remind yourself about what you're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, and also the Da'wah project, the fourth thing I want to mention to you, the Da'wah project, which is for you to engage in other, with others to invite them to the program to look at this program inshallah we, we every day we remind you to do so and so that's what we refer to as the dawa project to reach out to your family members your relatives your friends other muslims you know tell them about the program encourage them to watch your program and fifthly the infaq pro uh, project the infaq project and today i want to say something about this in fact the infaq project in fact meaning to spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 245, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِدُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا فَيُدَعِفَهُ لَهُ أَدْعَافًا كَثِيرًا وَاللَّهُ يَقْبِدُ وَيَبُسُدُ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Who is it that will loan to Allah a beautiful loan? which Allah will double onto his credit and multiply many times. It is Allah that gives you want or plenty, and to him shall be your return. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah talks about uh, the loan 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the kard or kard hasana, the loan that you give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need anything from us. But this is a way for us to benefit ourselves, for us to gain great blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholars have mentioned five stages of rewards for the believers, for the, in fact, the, the, the spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they give, the spending their wealth, a portion of their wealth for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Five stages of rewards that I want to share with you today. Firstly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And whoever does an atom weight of good will see it. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَاهُ Whoever does an atom weight of good will see it. You do something, no matter how small that deed is, you will see the reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When this ayah was revealed, in the hadith is mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase the rewards for his followers, for his ummah, for the believers. That they would spend for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they would get more rewards. At, at this first level, one, one to one. One good deed, uh, you get uh, one blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how small that good deed is, uh, an atom's weight. No matter how small your in fact, your spending way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you will, get, you will see that reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, in response to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the second stage of rewards for the believers for spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran, مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالُهَا عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا Whoever does a good deed shall have ten times the reward for it. So now at the second level, each good deed, you reward it ten times more for this. Through the mercy of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through this dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when this ayah was revealed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, compensate my ummah even more than that. Look at how the Prophet ﷺ is concerned about us and for us. He says, Ya Allah, compensate, reward my ummah more than that for the good deed that they're doing. And then the next ayah was revealed, which is the third level of rewarders, third stage of reward for the believers. Many rewards, more than ten, for one good deed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 245. Man kathira. Who is it that will loan to Allah a beautiful loan so that Allah will multiply His rewards many times? Who is that person? that will loan to Allah a beautiful loan so that Allah will multiply his rewards many times. So now, uh, at the first level, one to one, second level, uh, ten good rewards for one, and then now many, more than ten, for the one good deed that you do uh, to spend with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who would give this loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this card hasana? Uh, the, and once again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the scholars have mentioned in tafsir that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need anything from His creation. He is free of needs. But this is a way for Him to encourage us to do good deeds so that He can reward us more. He can reward us more. When this ayah was revealed, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. Ya Allah, compensate my ummah with more than that. Reward my ummah with more than that. And then the next level was given to the believers, the next ayah, for the, the fourth level now, the fourth level. At the first level, once again, one good deed, you get one reward. Uh, the second level, ten rewards for, for one good deed. At the third level, many rewards, many more re rewards, more than ten. And now the fourth level, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِكُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ أَنْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَابِلَ فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةٍ مِيَةُ حَبَّةٍ وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءٍ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِعٌ عَلِيمٌ Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 261. At this fourth level now, fourth stage of rewards for the believers, 700 rewards for one good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah says, The likeness of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is that of a grain of corn. A grain of corn. It grows seven ears, and each ear has a hundred grains. So one grain grows seven ears or branches. In each year, there are 100 grains. So that 7 by 100, that's 700. And Allah gives manifold increase to whomever He wills. And Allah wants increase more than that to whomever He wants. And Allah is all, all, all embracing, all knowing. So uh, the scholars of the, you've mentioned that you, you get this 700 rewards for one good deed. And then Allah wants gives more than that 700 more 1400 2100 2800 3500 it goes on and on and they said it depends now on your level of sincerity that how sincere you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you give your de when you uh, give your in fact your charity your donation sadaqah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because uh, people may have different niyya and so on but the 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 more pure your niya is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greater you reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, as the Prophet mentions that, among the greatest of virtuous good deeds you can do is to give charity with your right hand and your left hand doesn't know what you're doing. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. In other words, secretly, you, you do this only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this way, that you want to keep doing good deeds for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So look at the great rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 700 times. Imagine that level of returns on investment. Today in society, for the dunya investment, when people do investment and they hear about returns on investment, if they can get 10%, they feel very happy about that. 15%, even more happy. 20%, oh, they grab that opportunity right away. Here last one tells, telling us 700% returns on your investment. Each good deed you do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reward is 700 times, and that's minimum. They increase over that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallahu yu da'ifuli man yasha. In this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant multiple incre increases to whomever He wants. And so you want to try to do your, your your, in fact, your spending in the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your sadaqah charity in the best way possible, in the best way possible. There is the beautiful uh, hadith of uh, Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra, radiallahu anha, wa alayhi salam, that when, when someone came to her to beg for something, uh, and she would give them something, even though she was in need most of the time, but she was so generous that she would, would share with them. When she's giving a sadaqa, a charity, uh, she would wrap it in a piece of green cloth, perfume it, and then she give it to that person in that beautiful way. And then some of the sahabas ask her why, and she said, when, when I give this charity, this sadaqa, to someone, when I give charity, to, to someone, it reaches the hands of Allah before it reaches the hand of that person. So she wants to present it to Allah in this beautiful way. Look at this great example of the beloved daughter of the beloved Prophet Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra radiallahu anha wa alayhi salam. How she would be in this way. And so at this fourth level, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبت السبع سنابل في كل سنبلة مية حبة والله يضعف لمن يشاء والله واسع عليم Yes, 700 times you're rewarded for that one good deed of spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet again, when this ayah was revealed, the Prophet ﷺ made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, compensate my ummah with more than that. Look at the concern of the Prophet ﷺ for us. He wants more and more for us to get the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, grant more rewards to my ummah for the good deeds that they do. And then the fifth and final level, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran, in Surah Az-Zumar, chapter 39, verse 10, when he says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Those who patiently persevere and are steadfast will receive limitless rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without limit. Different people, depending on their uh, they suffer, they patiently persevere and are steadfast. Depending how much they do this, the rewards are limitless from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Those who patiently persevere and are steadfast will receive boundless, limitless rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. More than 700 times. No limit. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to us. Because of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that the Prophet wants us to receive great rewards from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala so that we would be the best of Ummah on the Day of Judgment. That we will excel. And so I want you to remember this so you strive to excel. So that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be pleased with you. You'll make the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam happy. The more you strive for Islam, the more you strive for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the more you spend in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And so the, the, the five uh, stages of rewards for the believers for spending in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for infaq. And this is, this is what we call the infaq project that you must strive to be part of, inshallah. So one reward for one good deed, first level. Second level, ten rewards for the one good deed. Third level, many more rewards, more than ten for one good deed. Fourth level, 700 rewards for one good deed. And the fifth and final level, rewards without any limit for one good deed. How you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where is your sincerity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, this is what we should strive to do, inshallah. I want to share with you this beautiful hadith of a practice of one of the noble companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Abu Dhar Al-Ghifari, Rajulahu Anhu. Great companion. Uh, was so dedicated, especially his focus on spirituality. And there were some of the Sahabas who were like that. And they received more gifts from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about spirituality, about tasawwuf. And, and they convey that knowledge to us. At head of them, Sayyidina Imam Ali, Karam Allahu Wajahu Wa Alayhi Salam. And this hadith, this pra it's a practice of Sayyidina Abu Dhar al Ghifari, that in Masjid al-Nabawi, Masjid al-Prophet in Medina, in those days, uh, after each salah, he would, the Sahabas would pray in the Masjid. After they pray in the Masjid, then when he finished performing salah, he would give sadaqah. The poor people who were there uh, and so on, he'd give sadaqah, he'd give charity, donation, charity to them to help them. After each and every salah, five times a day, after fajr, after dhuhr, after maghrib, after uh, fajr, dhuhr, asr, maghrib, isha, five salah. And then the other sahabs ask him about this. Why is he doing this? Why? Uh, they notice after each and every salah, he's doing his, his charity giving charity. And he says to them, do you not read the book of Allah? In the book of Allah, in the Quran, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to pray, he also commands us to spend in the way of Allah. 
wa aqimu as-salah wa atu zakat and zakat is a generic concept here for all types of charity zakat sadaqat khairat lillah and so on and so forth so uh, when you look at the quran now wherever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding, commanding us to pray he is also commanding us to spend in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact spending in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should be mindful of and so this is a great project for you to be part of to in fact project to spend in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for sayyidina budhar he wasn't uh, a, a, a very wealthy person. There are many other sahabas more wealthier than him, but whatever little he could afford, he would do that. So it is not difficult for you to spend something every day for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, whatever little you can do, you do that. But it's a great thing to do, great blessings. The Prophet says, every day that the sun shines, the sun rises, it becomes incumbent on, on you to do sadaqah. Uh, so there's no day that the sun doesn't rise. So every day a day of sadaqah for you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you to be from among Ahlul Infaq, those who would spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can grant you ziyadah, can grant you more and more from his bounties, from his blessings, from his rizq, from his ni'mah. Amin, amin, amin. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Wa salamu alaykum. Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim wa salatu wa salam wa ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd I want to share with you today this wonderful opportunity to gain much blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in the hadith ma naqasa malu abdin min sadaqa the wealth of a person will never decrease because of spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that your wealth will increase when you spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you engage in infaq fi sabilillah. Your wealth will increase. And so the opportunity for you to increase your wealth greatly by spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The opportunity I want to share with you is uh, for our live stream broadcast. This broadcast that you who have been watching, uh, many of you every day, many of you several times a week, uh, the, the daily broadcast we have at 7 p.m., the Juma broadcast at 1 p.m. on Fridays, uh, the special programs, the special maulids, halakas, uh, and so on. So many different programs we have, and many people are benefiting from this program, as you know, many brothers and sisters like yourselves, families from many different countries are benefiting from the live stream broadcast. And we need to acquire new equipment and to update our equipment we have that we are using for the live stream broadcast. And there are several items we need. And the first one I want to share with you today and to appeal to you for this, it's the camera. We need to get a new camera, and the budget for the camera is six thousand uh, dollars. The uh, our our wonderful staff here at Islam Forum they've done their research uh, in this matter, and so we need to acquire that camera, uh, and the cost is six thousand dollars. And we hope you can uh, donate towards uh, this project. We've divided that amount into shares of a hundred dollars, and so you can donate one share of $100 or five shares which is $500 or 10 shares which is $1,000 or more whatever you can afford and whatever blessings you would like to receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make your donation uh, you can go to our website Islam Forum website at islamicforumonline.com and then on the donation page uh, you would see uh, one of the buttons for the different categories of donation labeled live stream equipment. It is the second button in the list of uh, categories for donation. So you click on that button, live stream equipment, and you would make your donations for this specific uh, cause that we are appealing to you for. Uh, we, we hope you can respond and respond generously uh, immediately by donating as many shares as you can 
each share being $100, and the total amount we would like to raise for the camera is $6,000. This is the first item we need, and there are several items. We would let you know once we collect the money for the camera, we would go on to the next item, and we let you know the details about that. So uh, do respond, and respond generously, and may Allah SWT bless you. Once again, the Prophet ﷺ says, ما نقص مال من صدقة. The, the wealth of a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never decreases because they spend in the way of Allah. Their wealth will only increase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them increase in their wealth. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your entire family and all your loved ones because of your financial support for the Islamic Forum. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'i. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا اللهم بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعليما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم أعزنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين آمين أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters I greet you all with the greetings of Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. And welcome once again to our special series of lectures. And this particular series is based on the theme of attaining the rewards of Hajj. Uh, the things that you can do which will grant you the rewards of Hajj, even if you're not able to perform Hajj. We mentioned uh, several points in our previous lectures. We will review those points and then mention new points in our lecture today. The first point I want to mention today, it is the definition of Hajj. Uh, linguistically, linguistically, the ma'ana uh, al-lughawi, or ma'ana lughatan, the linguistic definition of Hajj, and al-ma'ana istilahan, the definition as a terminology, as a term, Hajj, in our deen, in our religion. So al-Hajj, in the language, it, it means al-Qasdu, al-Qasdu, which literally means to intend to do something. You, you would like to do something, so you intend to do that action. So that's the meaning of Hajj, to intend to do uh, something. And as a, as a term in the religion, it means, is defined as qasdu makanin mu'ayyan fi zamanin mu'ayyan li amalin mu'ayyan which means to intend a place, a, a specific place, a certain place, to intend to go to that place to do so at a specific time. So kasdu makanin, makan meaning the place, a specific place that you intend to go to, to visit. Fi zaman in at a specific time. 
لِعَمَلٍ مُعَيَّنْ To do specific actions. So with respect to Hajj now, what is this? Qasdu Makan. The first of these three important concepts. You intend to go to a place. And that place is Mecca. To go to Mecca and the places of Hajj where you require to do the rituals of Hajj. Baytullah, Masjid al-Haram, Al-Kabat al-Musharrafa in Mecca. Because you have to go there for Tawaf and Sa'i and so on. And then Mina. Al-Mabid bi Mina. To be in Mina, the place not too far from Mecca. To be there uh, on the 8th of uh, Dhul Hijjah. Uh, the uh, Yawm al-Tarwiyah it's called. Uh, and then after, afterwards uh, from the 10th, 11th, 12th and optionally 13th. In Mina for the Mabit, so Mina, to also be in uh, Arafat on the day of Arafat, and then Musdalifa when you return after Arafat on the night uh, before proceeding back to Mina. So those are the different places that uh, you have to be in for the Hajj. So Kasdu Makanin Muayyan, Fi Zamanin Muayyan. Then the particular time now, the particular time, for Zaman in wine, is Zaman uh, or Zaman, the time, uh, refers to the spe specified time of Hajj that you would be there in Mecca. And the time of Hajj starts from Shawwal, Dhul Qadr, Dhul Hijjah. So you can proceed from Shawwal, the month of Shawwal, to go to Mecca, and let's say you're doing Hajj Tamatu'ah, then you would perform your Umrah, and then when you arrive in Mecca, from the time of Shawwal. Before Shawwal, it's not uh, permissible to start your Hajj. It must be done in the time of Hajj. So, Zaman in Mu'ayyan, in this definition. Uh, so, you go from Shawwal or Dhul Qad or Dhul Hijjah. Uh, and perform your Umrah, come out of the first state of Ihram or the first release from Ihram and wait until the 8th of the Hijjah to return back in the state of Ihram to continue your Hajj. So from the time uh, Shawwal or Dhul Qada or Dhul Hijjah and people would, go, would arrive in Mecca or plan their arrival in Mecca at different times depending on what type they're doing. Tiran, Ifrad, or Tamatua, the three, three types of Hajj that you can do with respect to uh, how you would uh, be in your state of Ihram, uh, whether you uh, intend Umrah and Hajj uh, together in one Ihram or in two separate Ihram, or you only intend Hajj itself or Ifrad uh, as it is called. So this is the zaman now. Fi zaman in muayyan. We talk about makan in muayyan, zaman in muayyan. Special place, special time. Li amalin muayyan. To engage in specific actions, specific deeds that you would do. So uh, you arrive in Mecca, you have to do your tawaf al qudum, for example, tawaf around the Kaaba. And then continue to complete your hajj, the hajj upon arrival. It, uh, umrah, you continue to uh, perform your Umrah, that's if you go before the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, you arrive Shawwal, Dhul Qadah, the first uh, few days of Dhul Hijjah, uh, then you would do that, do your Umrah, which is now Sa'i between Saf and Marwa, after your Tawaf, and so on, the rituals, uh, specific actions that you do for Umrah. Then you go to Mina, specific actions. You go to Arafat, specific actions. From the day of Arafat, in the night you, come, you, you go to Musdalifa, specific actions. In the morning, uh, which is now the tent of the Hijjah, uh, Yawm nahar you return back to Mina. And then uh, continue specific actions in Mina, such as Ramil Jamarat, uh, the, uh, the stoning of the Jamarat uh, in, in Mina. Uh, the Tawaf of Hajar, Tawaf of Ziyara, Tawaf of Ifada, as it is variously called, and so on. The specific actions of the Hajj. So that's your definition. Uh, linguistically, al Hajj bimana al Qasdu, to intend to do something. As a terminology in the, in the religion, specific actions now. Uh, at a specific time, uh, uh, specific place, specific actions 
in this way. So this is your definition, the meaning of Hajj that I wanted to share with you today that you would understand this concept. The second point I want to mention today, it is the concept of multiplication of rewards. How the rewards for a specific action is multiplied in an in incredible way. Uh, sometimes difficult to understand how, how and why this is so. And this is uh, particularly now we're talking about attaining the rewards of Hajj by doing certain actions. Even, so even though you're not performing Hajj, you can get the reward of Hajj by doing these actions that are mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, would distribute his bounties to whomever he wants and offer us opportunities to be from among the best of believers. To be from among the best of believers. It's like leveling the playing field, to use that expression. Yes, that no matter how you may have certain limitations, you can still compete with others. So for example, a wealthy person uh, who has wealth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with wealth, and they spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you don't have wealth, you cannot give donations and charity and sarga that that wealthy person is doing. How do you compete with them? So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned some of the things we can do. So some actions are multiplied in rewards. Uh, many examples, for example, in Ramadan. The nafil or optional action you do in Ramadan is rewarded like a far action, action you do in a time other than Ramadan. So here it is, a nafil action, an optional action you do is rewarded like a fard action, the nafil you do in Ramadan. For the other 11 month we do the same thing, that nafil action rewarded in that way, but in Ramadan it's rewarded as a fard action mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet. The fard you do in Ramadan is rewarded as 70 fard actions you do outside of Ramadan, mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet in this way. Laylatul Qadr, the 27th night of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares in the Quran, Laylatul Qadr khayru min alfi shahrin is better than a thousand month, more than 80, 83 years in that, in that, like more than a lifetime. And similarly, the actions you do on that occasion, that night of Laylatul Qadr, how it's rewarded. This is a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distributes his bounty however he wants to whomever he wants in this way. So it's an important concept that we must recognize and remember. Even for the Hajj itself, if the day of Arafat falls on a Friday, Jumu'ah, then you, and you perform Hajj uh, at, at, at that time in that year, then you reward it as if you do seven Hajj. One Hajj reward seven. So same, same actions you do for any Hajj. You go through all the rituals and everything. But if our, the day of Arafat, the day of Hajj, falls on Friday, Juma, you get, you get the rewards of doing seven Hajj. You see, so th th in this way, multiplication of rewards. This is a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I, I, I want to share this concept with you because when we mention these points about attaining the rewards of Hajj, someone may think that, uh, how can that be so? Because some of these actions are, it seems relatively easy to do. But you get great rewards of Hajj, Hajj that you have to spend so much money, that you have to travel to a far place, leave your home, leave your family, leave, make arrangements to get vacation from your job, uh, three week or a month or two week, wh whatever time you're going for Hajj, you go there, it's physically demanding to be there, sometimes uncomfortable. And so all of that sacrifice you have to go through. And then you do something very simple that the Prophet Ali mentioned hadith 
you get rewards of Hajj. But this is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as we mentioned in our previous lecture, the reality is a very small percentage of Muslims get a chance to go for Hajj. Two million, three million normal circumstances during the pandemic, much less. Just thousands of people being selected to go for Hajj. But let's say in a, a, a normal year, two million, three million can go for Hajj. But we have a Muslim population of close to two billion human beings in the world today. So compare two million with two billion. It's a very small percentage of people who get to go for Hajj. Most Muslims never go for Hajj in their entire life. The major, overwhelming majority of Muslims never get a chance to go. And those who go, it's a great blessing. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us to go for Hajj and for Omar to visit Masjid al-Haram, to visit Masjid al-Nabawi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to do this time and time again. Grant us that invitation and accept from us. But it's a great honor that we should really value and hold on to and make special dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for in this way. So I, I wanted to mention these very important points as we continue to discuss uh, this very beautiful theme of attaining the rewards of Hajj. We mention, firstly, going to the masjid to study. This hadith from Sayyidina Abu Umam, radiallahu anhu, the noble uh, companion, Sahaba of the Prophet ﷺ, he said that the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever goes to the masjid not desiring anything except to study what is good has a reward of a pilgrim who has completed the Hajj. Reported by Imam At-Tabrani in a Sunan. So in, in, in this way now, uh, the Prophet ﷺ is telling us about the importance of going to the masjid with the knee of studying. They want to study about the deen, learn more about the religion of Islam. And if this is your niyyah, you get the rewards of Hajj. And so every day when you join uh, our live stream broadcast on the same cha channel, we, we broadcasting to you from our masjid or zawi here at the Islam Forum of Canada. And there are some murids and others who can be with us. Uh, but most of our audience, they are from different countries throughout the world, each one of you. And you only have to have this sincere niyyah in your heart. That you, by joining us in this live stream broadcast, you want to gain knowledge of deen. You want to learn more about Islam. You have this sincere niyyah in your heart. Then inshallah, inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you the rewards of hajj. Because you're part of this gathering in the masjid, uh, a virtual gathering, because you're in different countries, but you're part of this majlis, uh, almost like a virtual masjid, that it is that you get the rewards of hajj in this way. And we, we mentioned many beautiful points about studying, uh, the virtues of studying Islam and learning about Islam. The Prophet Ali Islam mentions in hadith that's narrated by Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan that you're counted to be from among the best of believers. Khayrukum, the Prophet Ali says. The best of believers. Yes, such a great opportunity. Secondly, attaining the rewards of Hajj. Sitting in dhikr after Salatul Fajr. Sitting in dhikr after Salatul Fajr. Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik, who narrates that the Holy Prophet said, Whoever prays Fajr in the masjid in congregation, then sits remembering Allah until sunrise or shuruq, then prays two unit rakat of salah, will receive the reward of hajj and umrah. Complete, complete, complete. Tama, tama, tama. The Prophet Ali Islam mentioned, repeating tamatan uh, uh, three times for emphasis. Hadith reported by Imam At-Tabarani, sorry, Imam At-Tirmidhi, Hadith number 586 in his Sunan. So is here now this other method of attaining or achieving the rewards of Hajj. 
pray Salat al-Fajr in Jama'ah, in the, in the masjid. Then, in the same place that you pray your Fajr, some of the scholars mention you stay in the same jalsa position that you end your Salat in. But you stay in the same, sit down in the same place. Recite your dhikr until sunrise. Engage in dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, the, the usual regimen of dhikr, you recite the weird alam. After you finish your, your fajr, you recite weird alam dhikr. Then you recite surah yasin. And you continue like this until shuruq, until uh, sunrise. The, the other beautiful dhikr that we've mentioned that you can do. And then after sunrise, shuruq, you perform two rakat nafil salah. This is called Salatul Ishraq, a special Sunnah Salah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Salatul Ishraq, the Salah you, you, you pray after sunrise in this way. And then, then also you should make Dua, because this is a special time when Dua is accepted. When Dua is accepted, that you should... Uh, make dua also you do this you do these actions spend this time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you gain the rewards of hajj you gain the rewards of hajj tamatin 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 as the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and in one narration hajj and umrah you gain the reward of performing hajj and performing umrah the Prophet Ali gives us glad tidings of this beautiful practice that we can do to gain the rewards of Hajj. Now, the scholars have mentioned another important principle, and which is the likeness is in reward, not in discharge of one's duty. What this means is that you do these actions and you gain the rewards, the blessings of Hajj, as if you perform Hajj. But it does not absolve you of the obligation, of the requirement, the responsibility to perform your hajj. Because once you can afford to perform hajj, hajj becomes wajib on you, becomes obligatory on you to do. The moment you have the means to perform hajj, you can afford it. it be, it's no longer optional. It's wajib, it's obligatory on you. It's one of the pillars of Islam. And it comes in the force the moment you uh, can afford it. So if you can afford Hajj, and Hajj is now incumbent, obligatory upon you, then doing one of these actions does not remove that responsibility. You get the blessings of Hajj, but you still have to perform Hajj, your obligatory Hajj, once you can afford it. Two different things that we need to be mindful of. And so this uh, hadith tells us of the importance of remaining in dhikr after you finish Salat al-Fajr. It's a very beautiful thing because sometimes you know, there are some people who just as soon as the imam finished the salah, they just rush out of the masjid. They run away from the masjid like for Jumu'ah. Uh, but if you're able to stay in the masjid, there are some people who may not be able to stay back because of work situation. They have to rush back to work. Fine. But if you're able to stay in the masjid, do so. And in this particular case, Fajr. Uh, you, you stay on after Fajr and you engage in dhikr and dua and recitation of Quran. You make sure you do your weird alam dhikr. Then you get the great rewards of Hajj. Such a, a, a great opportunity indeed for us. Thirdly, going to the masjid to teach. Going to the masjid to teach. Sayyidina Abu Umama, radiallahu anhu, the noble companion Prophet sallam, narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, whoever goes to the masjid not desiring anything except to teach what is good has the reward of a pilgrim who has completed the hajj. 
reported by Imam at Tabarani in the Sunan. And Abi Umamata, Rajallahu Anhu, Ani Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a call, Man the Ghada Ilal Masjidi, La Yuridu Illa and Yetalama Khairan, O Yalamahu, Kanalahu Kajri Hajin, Taman Hijatuhu. And so now the concept of teaching others. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam wants to encourage us to engage in spreading the knowledge of Islam, teaching others or facilitating for them the, that they can learn more about Islam. And we've said one of the simple ways that each and every one of you can engage in is to invite people to watch our live stream broadcasts every day we have on our YouTube channel 7 p.m. and then throughout the day throughout the night our continuous broadcast 24 7 uh, very simple for you you don't need to be a scholar to do that you just invite people family members relatives friends others you know uh, to, to come to listen to the lectures and they learn something they learn about the Dean so you are contributing to teaching people about Islam to spreading the knowledge of Islam and then you become from among the best of believers based on the hadith of the Prophet Khairukum man ta'allam al-Qur'ana wa'allamahu The best of you is the one who teaches, a, who studies the Qur'an or learns the Qur'an and then teaches it to others. And by extension, all the Islamic sciences because all the Islamic sciences are derived from the Qur'an in this way. So you, you, you do that. You, you study Islam and you teach it to others. Or you facilitate others learning about Islam, such as benefiting from these lectures and these programs. This hadith is reported by Imam Tabrani and is graded as Hassanun Sahihun, this particular hadith of the Prophet. The fourth point I want to mention is to engage in tasbih, the care after the Fard Salah. So, any of the Fard Salah, five Fard Salah in a day, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asir, Maghrib, Isha. In this way, Man Sabaha, Wakabara, Wahamid, Allaha, Dubura, Kulla Salatin, Thalathan, Wathalathina, Marratan, Adraka, Ajraman, Hajja, Wa Tamara, Watasadaka. So, here now, the Prophet Ali is a beautiful hadith telling us something important that if you remain after you finish praying your salah. Now, previously we talked about Fajr, but now all five of them doing something specific. You remain after you finish your Salah and then you recite uh, the Tasbih, Subhanallah, uh, then Alhamdulillah, then Allahu Akbar, each one of them 33 times. Then you get the reward of someone who perform Hajj or someone who perform Umrah or someone who uh, spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So three things are granted to you, the rewards of Hajj, the rewards of Umrah, and the rewards of giving in Sadaqah by doing that as an encouragement for you. So here now, the Hadith, reported by Imam Bukhari in the Sahih, Hadith number 843, reported by Imam Muslim in the Sahih, Hadith number 595. Sayyidina Abu Huraira narrated, he said the poor came to the Messenger of Allah, the poor people. And in some narrations, it's mentioned, it refers to Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Khifari and Sayyidina Abu Darda radiallahu anhum. The poor came to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and said, O Messenger of Allah, the wealthy have gone with the highest ranks and lasting blessings. They offer salah, just as we offer it. They observe the fast, as we do. And because they are wealthy, they perform hajj and umrah. And they go for jihad, and they spend in charity. They do all of these things because they have wealth. The Messenger of Allah said, Shall I not teach you something? with which you may overtake those who surpass you 
and with which you will surpass those who will come after you. None will excel you except he who does what you do. You should recite. Tasbih, Subhanallah, Takbir, Allahu Akbar, Tahmeed, Alhamdulillah, 33 times after each Salah. So Subhanallah 33 times, Alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 33 times after each Salah. And then you get those blessings. And that the hadith uh, reported by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. So it's mutafakun alayhi. So there is also an adi additional part of the hadith I want to explain a bit, inshallah. Uh, where they said that they, they differed among themselves, among the Sahabas, about whether Allahu Akbar should be recited 33 times or 34 times. And so they went back to the Prophet Ali Wasallam, and they asked him, and he says 33 times each. This is after the Salah, the special dhikr after the Salah. And the point I want to make is that the hadith, there's also 34 times mentioned for Allahu Akbar, but that is called a dhikr al fatimiya the dhikr, the special dhikr that was given to Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra. That the Prophet Ali uh, told her of the dhikr that would take her to Jannah. Subhanallah, 33 times. Allahu Akbar, 33 times. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, 33 times. Then Allahu Akbar, 34 times. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. So Allahu Akbar, adding an additional one. This difference is the dhikr that was given to Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra. And so some scholars have mentioned that with that niyyah, you do both. You do your 33, 33, 33 to follow, to get the blessings that the Prophet mentioned, the dhikr after the salah. And then you add Allahu Akbar another time to get a dhikr of the special dhikr that was given to Sayyidah Fatima the Zahra in this way. And the rewards, uh, Hajj, Umrah, and Sadaqah. And we mentioned the two, the two Sahabas that came. They came uh, to ask the Prophet this, and with them, uh, and some scholars have mentioned that there were other poor Sahabas with them to ask this question. Uh, Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, Sayyidina Abu Darda, great and noble companions of the Prophet The three rewards, you get rewards if you do this action for Hajj, for Umrah, and for Sadaqah. Spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once again, the principle is that this is with respect to the rewards of the action. But it doesn't nullify the obligation to do that action if it's required of you. you know, for example, you have to give zakat. 2.5% of your net assets every year. So if you do these dhikr and so on, it doesn't exclude you from having to give zakat. You still have to give zakat. But when you do the actions, you get the blessings of sadaqah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the great importance of uh, the virtues of dhikr. It says in the Quran, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Remember me and I will remember you. Yeah, when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, engage in dhikr of Allah. Remember me, I will remember you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember you. Remember me, I mention you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mention those who do dhikr, who engage in dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mention them to the angels that are in His presence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, boast to the angels what His believers are doing when they engage in this sincere worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, these are powerful words for you to recite, to engage in dhikr of Allah. When you recite in weird al-am, powerful words. Focus on the meaning of the words. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. Other words of dhikr, do la ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. In this way, you, you want to try to do these dhikr, focus on the meaning on what you're reciting. Connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't let it be an empty, distracted, heedless action. You're just reciting it as an empty ritual. You know, some people after the salah, they're just concerned with counting 33 on their fingers and not what they're saying. They're not, bother, they're not bothering about the meaning of what they're saying. Subhanallah, 
Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, like this. No, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. You're just counting 33 in your fingers. Finish it off as quick as possible. No, that should not be the, the attitude. Because then you, you, you don't get the rewards for, as you should for this beautiful action. Do it properly, sincerely, beautiful niyyah in your heart. Only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're doing it. Not you're doing this and then you're thinking about uh, what food you have to eat for lunch, if it's Zohar time or Fajr time or what, uh, uh, what I have to eat, what I want to eat for breakfast. Maghrib time thinking about dinner and so on. No. Uh, free yourself from all of those thoughts. Dedicate yourself to engage in this beautiful act of dhikr. And these words are powerful words. These words are powerful words. These words, subhanAllah, the Prophet said in hadith that subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, afwan. These words, they fill our scale of deeds. These are powerful words. Fill our mizan, tamla ul mizan. Yes, fill our skills. You, you would think, how can this be so? Just to say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. Other words of dhikr, La ilaha illallah. In this way, uh, how can it fill our scale of deeds? The mizan, tamla ul mizan. But they are powerful words. Once again, the bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The great wisdom, ultimate wisdom come, coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and conveyed to us by His chosen Prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tamla'ul mizan, tamla'u aw tamla'an, ma bayna sama'i wal ard. Whatever is from the heavens and the earth, it's filling it with good deeds, with blessings. These words, these words, Rise up to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It goes up, it's elevated, keeps going up, going up, going up to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, powerful words that you should engage in. And also, I want you to understand that when you finish praying your salah, it is a time when the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends on you. So you don't want to rush away run away from your salah. It's good for you to stay there for a while as, as you're able to and recite your dhikr, make your dua. Because also, uh, one of the moments, one of the time when dua is accepted is after you finish your first salah. When you finish your salah, it's a time when dua is accepted, so you always want to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this way, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends on you when you engage in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me and I will remember you. The scholars have mentioned limitless virtues and benefits from this statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember me, engage in the dhikr of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers you. Remember me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of you. Remember me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, solve your problems. You remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your dua. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dhikr of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of your needs. Engage in dhikr of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes your problems. Re remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Engage in dhikr of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes your anxieties and your stress and your worries and your financial difficulties and grants you shifa from your illness in, in this way. In this way, the beautiful mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So not only are you getting the rewards of Hajj and Umrah, you're getting so much more by engaging in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the Fard Salah. And by extension, after each and every Salah that you're doing, it's a special time. The, you know, when you perform your Salah, how you're close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How you engage in dialogue, in munajat, conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
The Prophet ﷺ mentioned this in hadith. When, uh, when you recite the Fatiha in the Salah, when you recite the Surah Al-Fatiha in the Salah, Allah SWT responds to you. When you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah SWT responds, Hamadani Abdi. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Majadani Abdi. Maliki Yawmideen, Athna Alayya Abdi. Allah SWT is responding to us. Every, every verse you're reciting, each of the verses in Surah Fatiha, Allah SWT is responding to us. This is our conversation with Allah in our Salah. Such a great moment it is. Allah SWT has put that blessing therein. Yes. Yes. When we make our dua, Ihdina Sirat Mustaqim, Allah SWT says, Hada bayni wa bayna abdi. This is between me and my slave, my servant. And we continue, Allah Dalin Amin. Allah SWT says, Hada bayni wa bayna abdi. Wali abdi masal. This is between me and my slave. And I will give my slave whatever he or she wants. Subhanallah. This is the great blessing of this moment to be with Allah in salah, in dhikr, in this way. And one of the great things, you get the blessings of hajj and the blessings of umrah. Not restricted to that, many more blessings we get. So I want to encourage you to do this. These are a few more important points I want to share with you on this great theme of attaining and achieving the rewards of hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with those rewards, help us, grant us tawfiq to do all of these points that we are mentioning so we can gain the rewards of hajj. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the invitation to go for hajj and for umrah, to visit his noble house, Baytullah al-Haram, Masjid al-Haram, al kabat al-Musharraf, to visit Masjid al-Nabawi, to visit the Prophet sallallahu the greatest visit we can ever do in our entire existence is to visit the best of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa bless us to do that time and time again. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een wa akhi da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع Sulla, Tatanati, Menzalla, Tenazu.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And welcome once again on this uh, beautiful Friday evening uh, here from your Zawid Islamic Forum. We thank you for being with us. Uh, blessed day today, the first Jum'ah of the Uh, month of Dhul Hijjah, inshallah, uh, on, in, in these blessed times. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you and uh, help us to do more and more in these best days of the year. Uh, for a concluding session, we <coughs> I want to make special dua. Um, the uh, dua for the sponsors of the iftar program in this month of uh, Dhul Hijjah in these uh, blessed days. Uh, fasting is uh, a, a great ibadah to do in these uh, special days. And so we thank the families that are sponsoring the iftar program. May Allah SWT bless all of them, uh, including uh, Sidi Hasib and Sidi Asian family, uh, Sidi Fazal, uh, Saifullah and family, uh, Sidi, Hussain, Sidi Hussain, Sidi Faisal Tahir, uh, and all the other families that are sponsoring the Iftar program in, in these blessed days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them. We also uh, want to Make special offer our donors, those who donated today. Uh, we have the special appeal now on tonight, the final night for the appeal for Juma, the Juma appeal for this week, uh, for you to donate something for Juma uh, on this blessed occasion. The Prophet says that the best of charity in the week it's the charity you give on Juma. So. Um, we want to encourage you to make your Juma donation tonight once you finish your program. If you haven't done so already, you go to our website and you make your donation for Juma. And the second appeal is for the blessed days, the best days of the year, these 10 days, uh, for the 10 day automated donation. So to do, to do that, you go to our website and you click on the button, the best days of the year or the best 10 days of the year to make your 10-day automated donation, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we also have good news. Uh, uh, two khatams uh, to share with you uh, tonight. Uh, Sister Bibi Ibrahim, Brother Muhammad Ibrahim, Brahman Rani from uh, Pembroke Pines in Florida, they did their khatam. This is very nice, alhamdulillah. Uh, I, I'm encouraging all of you to do your khatam in these 10 days, the, the best days of the year, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the good deeds that you do in this time. Try to do as much good deeds as you can. Uh, we mentioned many things in the khutbah today uh, about the virtues of this time, and, and, and especially for the day of Arafat. You, know, you do a good deed now, and you get the blessings as if you are doing that deed continuously for two years. Uh, it's, uh, it's an amazing opportunity, so try to do as, as much good. So, alhamdulillah, congratulations to uh, Sister Bibi Ibrahim and Brother Muhammad Ibrahim uh, from uh, Pembroke Pines, Florida, United States, for doing their khatam. Also, uh, Sidi Faisal Tahir did his khatam today on his blessed day of Jum'ah. So, another khatam for the IFC Quran project. And so, I, I hope, inshallah, more and more of you can push yourselves to recite more and more of the Quran to do your khatam in these 10 days, inshallah, in this month of Dhul Hijjah, blessed month, month of Allah, sacred month that Allah subhanahu wa mentions in the Quran. <coughs> and also a reminder if you did not make your knee to join the IFC Quran project, uh, I request you, recommend for you to do that now. Make your near your intention that you, you want to be part of the IFC Quran project. And you start getting blessings for, for this inshallah. And, and so, uh, 
sometimes, some, some days you may be busy, you may not uh, get time to recite Quran, uh, but still you get a blessing just because you make your niyyah. Uh, because someone, one of our brothers and sisters that have joined the project in some different country in the world, they're doing it, and you get a blessing because you make your niyyah to join the project. And this is a collective ibadah that we are doing, ibadah in jama'ah. So you get a blessing for everyone that's doing it. So tonight, alhamdulillah, we have two khatams. And the, 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 the brothers and sisters that did their khatam, they get a special blessings. But all of you, once you've made your, made your niyyah to join the IFC Quran project, you share in the blessings as well. This is a great thing about uh, these projects that we're doing. The Quran project, the Salawat project. Similarly, uh, you know, once you make your niyyah to join the Salawat project, you, you get that blessings. Whether you, some, some days, once again, you may be busy, you don't get to do salawat, but you get blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because your need is to be part of this project. The dhikr project, to do weird al-am uh, at least twice a day, uh, and so on. The infaq project, the da'wah project, all of these things you want to make your need to be part of it, inshallah. So you can multiply your blessings. So congratulations once again to Sister Bibi and Brother Muhammad Ibrahim from Florida, Sidi Faisal Tahir for the khatam and I look forward to more khatams that you can report inshallah. And several other requests for dua, I want to include all of them in dua inshallah. We also want to recognize some of the names and to thank uh, our donors uh, for their donation to the Islamic Forum. Starting with uh, Sister uh, Brenda Williams from Harlem, New York. We thank her for her regular generous donation to the Islamic Forum. May Allah bless Sister Brenda Williams and reach her many more times. Sister Bibi Kamila Sattar for her donation to the Islamic Forum. Brother Brian Ibrahim from Florida. Sister Zalina Tour and family from Brampton for their donation to the Islam Forum. Siti Sarwat Anwar for their donation to the Islamic Forum. Sister Rihanna Amirullah and family from Maple for their donation to the Islamic Forum. Dr. Tahir Chowdhury from Connecticut in the United States. Uh, Brother Farhan Siddiqui and family for their donation. Uh, uh, Sidi Yusuf Khan for their donation, Brother Gulam Khan and family, Sidi Naim Ali for the donation, Sister Carol Shira from the city of Austell in Georgia, in the United States, we thank them for the donation, Brother Abdullah Hassanain, we thank them for their donation to the Islamic Forum, Brother Jamil Muhammad. We thank you for the donation. Uh, Sister Bibi Muhammad from Markham, we thank them for their donation to the Islamic Forum. Uh, Sister Farheen Warsi and family, Brother Patrick Wilson, Sister Khatul bin Zamanuddin, we thank them for the donation. Brother Far Far Farzam Farooq and family, we thank them for the donation, inshallah. Sister Bibi Ibrahim also, Sister Shaniza Khan, Sister Fazila Hanif, Sister Sharmila Hanif, uh, Sister Zairul and family, Sister Bibi Farida Babs and Umar for their donation to the Islamic Forum. Uh, these are some of the names. Uh, there, there are many other names uh, that inshallah we would, we would mention tomorrow and the day after. Uh, especially from the Juma donation today, many other brothers and sisters donated. Uh, we want to thank all of them and we hope you can all make your Juma donation tonight. Uh, on this blessed occasion, uh, when deeds are multiplied and blessings are deeds, are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This uh, amazing hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I, I want you to you know, like write down this hadith, 
uh, somewhere so you can remind yourselves about it because these are words that should inspire you and motivate you to action. Mamin ayamin. There are no days in which good deeds are more loved by Allah than in these days that we are in now. You know, so you, you write it down, put it somewhere we can, on, on the fridge and the kitchen and so on, you know, this hadith. So you see it often. And then uh, you, every time you remind yourself of what they try to do something good, do a good deed. With this near that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love the good deeds that you're doing in this time. Uh, try to do this as much as possible. So you remind yourself of the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Ma min ayamin al amalu salihu fiha ahabu ila Allahi min hadhihi al ayam." There are no days in which good deeds are more loved by Allah than in these days. So you, you then you try to do it as much as possible, or as many good deeds as you can, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you for so doing. So, you know, sometimes you want to do something good and you delay it. Uh, for some, some convenient time. Uh, but you don't want to delay your good deeds now. You want to do as much as you can do in this time. Uh, it, it's like accumulating uh, um, your balance and increasing your balance in your bank account for the hereafter, for the hereafter. You're increasing it more and more every time you do a good deed. So I want you to do that, inshallah. May Allah bless you for so doing. We also want to recognize everyone in the chat. Uh, at the top of the chat, there are some special messages from the admin staff. Uh, please go through that, those messages and, uh, as a reminder for, for many things that are there for you, inshallah, including the Qurbani uh, program, the IFC Qurbani program. If you would like to do Qurbani with IFC, please send an email to us, ifcinfo.gmail.com. Uh, so that we can add you to the Qurbani list. The, the staff will get back to you with the details, inshallah. So do this as soon as possible before the deadline. We welcome uh, Sister Zairul and family from Toronto. Welcome uh, Siti uh, Lazina Kharmular. And since I ruled it up to chapter 90 of the Quran, uh, so uh, inshallah, uh, you, you, you're getting very close to the finish line. Chapter 90, so you have 24 more surahs to do, but they're generally short surahs in the last years. Uh, so you should try to finish it off soon uh, this weekend, inshallah. You can do your khatam. Siti Lazina Kharmular and family from uh, Pinal in Trinidad. Wishing Dhul Hijjah Mubarak with me. Auntie Betty Amina Dean from Toronto. Welcome to all of you, inshallah. Uh, Sister Chandra Haq, Brother Nizam Haq and family uh, from Scarborough. Welcome, wishing Dhul Hijjah greetings to everyone. So it's good, it's good to, for all of you to wish Dhul Hijjah greetings and Juma greetings today also. And then for Eid next week, uh, Eid Mubarak greetings like this, inshallah. It's good to exchange these greetings because these, these are simple and easy ways for you to increase your blessings uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you keep doing this and you build awareness among people, inshallah. Uh, Siti Sabiha Qadir, Siti Kamran, Ansara uh, from Columbus, Ohio, in the United States. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Siti Halima Ali from Brampton. Uh, welcome, Siti Halima. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Siti Riham Islam from New York City, United States. Welcome, Siti Riham. Uh, thanks for joining us. Sister Halima Khan wish, uh, from Markham, welcome. Wishing Jumun Bar greetings to everyone. Siti Sharon Eden and family from Chattamago on the east coast of Demar and Guyana, South America. Dhul Hijjah Mubarak, greetings to everyone. Very good. Sister Razia Khan, with Tariq Feroz uh, from Scarborough, welcome. Alhamdulillah. Brother Muhammad Ibrahim, Sister Bibi Ibrahim and family from Pembroke Pines in Florida, United States. I says grateful for Sheikh for the blessed programs and for the Quran project. Completed the Khatam today. Alhamdulillah. Mubarak, congratulations. Excellent. And you can start your next Khatam tonight. Uh, so you start from the beginning of the Quran again, uh, Surah Fatiha, 
uh, and Sutil Bakara like this uh, is, is very good. So it, the blessings will keep flowing to you, inshallah. Brother Keith McDonald, Sister Ola, Brother Juan from Toronto, welcome to all of you, alhamdulillah. Uh, Sister Bibi Farida, Babs and Omar from Pembroke Pines, Florida, United States, welcome. So it's grateful to Sheikh Faiz for the uh, blessed dua and the lectures, alhamdulillah. Brother Ahsan Shabir and family from Italy, welcome. And we make dua for you and your family uh, as, re as you requested, inshallah. May Allah bless you. Sister Zainatul Beg and family uh, from Brampton, welcome Sister Zainatul Beg and thanks for coming out for Juma today and for your donations, uh, for the, the monthly donation and for the special days of the Hijjah, the best days of the year. May Allah bless you and enrich you many more times, Sister Zainatul Beg and family for your donations to the Islamic Forum. Sister Abid and Sister, Jam uh, Sister Shamayla from Manchester, United Kingdom, welcome. Thanks for joining us. And today we recite five views of the Quran and 25,000 salawat. Excellent, alhamdulillah. And says we are grateful for the Juma Khutbah by our beloved Sheikh Faisal. Uh, we loved it, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, excellent. Uh, we thank you for your feedback. And for each one of you, we uh, encourage you to send your feedback for the Khutbah. Uh, you can type it in the chat and if uh, there are special topics you would like us to speak about in the khutbah. Send us an email about that as well, inshallah. So give us your feedback as you continue to tell other Muslims you know about our, our broadcast and they can join it, inshallah. Sister Tabassum uh, from uh, Hyderabad in India. Welcome all of you from India, Sister Tabassum. Uh, thanks for joining us. We make a dua for you as requested, inshallah. And do try to recite the Weird Alam Dhikr. The Weird Alam Dhikr. And it's on our website. Uh, e either one of the two websites, the two main websites, the sheikhfaisal.com website or islamformonline.com website. In the Dhikr section, you go to the Dhikr section. And then the first, the first uh, Dhikr is al Weird Alam, the German litany. So, Sister Tabasam, we hope you can. Uh, download, print out the PDF file so you have a hard copy of it and then the audio file you can listen to it inshallah so you do the weird alarm every day. Let us know in the chat, uh, keep us updated. That's the Zikir, Zikir project that you can do inshallah and tell your friends about the program. They can watch the program, your friends in India and inshallah may Allah bless you for doing so. So welcome all the way from India, from Hyderabad, Sister Tabasum. Thanks for joining us. Uh, City Bibi and Sanali and Sister Najrun Baksh from Pigeon Island, East Coast of Demara in Guyana, South America. Welcome. And Sister Tabassum requesting dua for her marriage and studies. We make special love for you and your career. For all of that, may Allah bless you. And the Weird Lamb is very good for this, very effective for this, inshallah, that you recite Weird Lamb and then you, you make this dua for all these things you're asking for. We make dua for you as well, inshallah. City, uh, Sister Ola Rahman and family from Toronto, Sister Rose from Brampton, welcome. Sister Bibi Zamino Razak and family from Cotton Tree Village, West Coast, Borbis in Guyana, South America, welcome. Uh, Sidi Rahim, Sidi Rihanna, Sidi Bibi and family from Presal, Halak and Trinidad in West Indies, welcome. Brother Muhammad Yaqub and family from the city of Chelam in Pakistan, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Make dua for you, your family, your brother as requested, inshallah. And Siti Riham, thanks uh, for saying Amin to the dua during the program. This is very good. May Allah bless you for doing so. Sister Ruksana Begum and family from Brampton, welcome. And then uh, for Quran Project, recited from Surah Zumar to Surah Jathia. Uh, very good. So uh, see if you can push yourself to recite more, inshallah. You did a good recitation today. Uh, so tonight, tomorrow, recite more so you can do your khatam. Uh, in these uh, 10 days, inshallah, and 2,000 salawat. Alhamdulillah, make dua for you and your family is requested. We welcome Sister Bibi Jamila Wahab from Toronto, Quran Project, up to chapter 3 and 200 salawat today. Very good, alhamdulillah. Sister Bibi Farida Chan and Brother Samachan from Miami. 
Florida. I says grateful to Sheikh Faisal for bringing us closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Quran project completed up to chapter 20. Salawat project 500 salawat today for a total of 44,000 salawat. Very good. This is Shakila Majid from Florida, United States. Welcome. Alhamdulillah. And 500 salawat today. Very nice. I see the Hasib. I see the Asian family from Brampton. Welcome to all of you. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you. Sister Karima Ali and family from Buffalo, New York. Welcome, Sister Karima. Thanks for joining us. Siti Riham says, Zulhijjah Mubarak greetings to Saint Sheikh Faisal and the admin staff. Alhamdulillah. Very good. Brother Muhammad Siddiq and family. Uh, uh, from Brampton, welcome. And Brother Muhammad Siddiq says, uh, Says remembering Dilip Kumar, Brother Muhammad Yusuf Khan, uh, in your recent lecture, and dua was indeed a noble thing. Thanks for doing so. Um, I, I, this is very important, and thanks, Brother Muhammad Siddiq, for this feedback, um, because uh, he was an outstanding personality. I mean, he was uh, the, the most famous, the most outstanding, most accomplished actor in India. Uh, but uh, our concern is his Islamic involvement, and there are many things that uh, he did. He was uh, a great intellectual. Sometimes people don't realize this because they only know about the acting aspect of his life or, or his career. But when you study his personality, he was uh, an outstanding intellectual, an outstanding philosopher, a very brilliant person. Uh, he didn't achieve all of those things uh, if he wasn't, you know, very educated and very intelligent and very brilliant. He was, indeed. When you, and the more you study uh, him and his life and his accomplishment, uh, you realize that he's, he was a really an outstanding personality, Dilip Kumar. And uh, even in his acting and so on, it's, uh, the, 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 the films he portrayed, the personalities, characters he portrayed were decent, decent people. Uh, and now it, it's, it's, it's different uh, in that industry, uh, but in, in his time, it, it was a different time. Uh, and he, he portrayed good morals, beautiful morals, much of which was uh, uh, in compliance with Islamic morals as well. So it's, 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 uh, it's good that we remember him. You know, some, sometimes uh, we forget to recognize the goodness of people. And the sunnah of the Prophet is that when a believer dies, we, uh, we, we mention good things about them. Even though they may have done wrong things, we all, we all do wrong things, but we beg Allah SWT for forgiveness. Uh, but we, the, the sunnah is that when someone passes away, you mention their good things. This is the way of the Prophet and I, I had mentioned also when I talked with him that he was blessed to visit Mecca, to visit Medina. Uh, to visit the Prophet ﷺ in Medina, uh, visit Masjid Nabawi and so on. Uh, and this is Allah. No except with invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not enough that you have money, you're wealthy to go there, buy a plane ticket and go there. No, many people are wealthy and they never go uh, for uh, Hajj and Umrah and so on. There are many people, this may surprise you, but I, when I, I, I studied there for many years and so on, I saw this. There are many people from there, from the country itself, They've never gone for Hajj and Umrah, even though they're right there in the country. It's, it's easy for them to do it. They've never did it, uh, even though they can afford it and they're right there, it's easy. But the invitation is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he went there. And I, I mentioned that when he was in Medina, uh, in, in, even on the outskirts of the masjid, the street masjid, he took off his shoes, he didn't, work, he didn't walk with his shoes, he walked, walked barefoot there, and so on. Uh, so many, many good qualities that uh, Dilip Kumar, uh, his legal proper name is Yusuf Islam, sorry, Yusuf Khan, Yusuf Khan. Uh, and we make dua for him, we continue to make dua for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive him, have mercy on him, and bless him with Janet and Firdaus. Ameen. So thanks, Brother Muhammad Siddiq, for reminding us about that. And today also I mentioned dua uh, for Brother Rashid Haqqani, I mentioned in the khutbah as well. Very uh, uh, amazing personality, very, was very active in our community, especially in, in the Sufi gatherings and uh, for the gatherings of uh, his uh, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Aziz Nizami, um, 
the Sajjad al Nasheen of uh, uh, Khwaja Nizamuddin Awliya, the Maqam in Delhi in India. Whenever he comes to visit Canada, he always comes to the Islamic Forum. We host the, the Urs or Haul of Khwaja Nizamuddin Awliya here. So, Brother Rashid Haqqani was the main organizer for all these programs. He did a lot of work. Uh, wonderful person. Uh, may Allah SWT bless him. Uh, and we are sad at his passing, but we make dua for him. Allah SWT forgive him, have mercy on him, bless him, and grant him genital freedoms. Today was his janazah. So we make dua for him. And also, uh, my brother in law, Nazim Sahib, his brother, Fazil Sahib, passed away in, in Guyana in uh, Clumbrook. So, uh, Sidi Sharon Eden, if you can please um, uh, mention to the Murids and uh, Sidi Ahmed Vantal, so you can arrange to visit the family and find out about the arrangements for Janazah and so on, inshallah, so you can help out. May Allah bless you for doing so. Sidi Halima uh, Khan for Markham, Jumma Mubarak, greeting to everyone, Salawat Project, a thousand Salawat today. And uh, up to chapter uh, power number six, and also recited Weird Alam. Very good. So you keep doing that, inshallah. Recite Weird Alam at least twice a day. Uh, Sidi Shamir, Sidi Samir. Sidi Amir, Sidi Shabir. City Shazia, City Sadika, City Alima, for all from Queens, New York, in the United States. Welcome to all of you. City Ali Khan and the family from Ottawa, welcome. Thanks for joining us. City Malana Tarak Al Faisal, City Karina Al Faisal from Kurap in Trinidad and West Indies, welcome. And City uh, Malana Tarak has recited up to the seventh Jews of the Quran and 500 salawat today for a total of 100,000 salawat. Very nice, a nice number, 100,000 salawat. For this year so far, very good. Keep keep up the good work. May Allah bless you, inshallah, bless both of you. Alhamdulillah. Sidi Faisal Tahir, Brampton, welcome. Make dua for you as requested, inshallah. And completed uh, up the, uh, the end of Jews uh, 30, did the Khatam of the Quran, inshallah. Very good. Excellent. Alhamdulillah. So these are the names that we want to. Uh, recognize in the chat to make do of all of them and for all of you. So in Duana or Nia, uh, all our donors, may Allah SWT bless them, all our donors who donated today, yesterday and before. Make special for all our donors and we uh, make the appeal to you, the two things, today for the Juma appeal, that you can do, make a donation for Juma, and then for the 10 best days of the year to do the automated 10 day donation for that inshallah, so especially for all our donors, the sponsors of our uh, iftar program in these blessed days of Dhul Hijjah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them, and uh, everyone in the chat, all those who requested dua, and then for each and every one of you, special love for each and every one of you, whatever dua you want to make, put it in your heart, and we make dua on your behalf inshallah, so please raise your hands and join me in dua, reciting Fatih with the name of Tawfiq and Kubul and Ziyadah. Allahumma ameen. Rabbana taqabal minna Rabbana bisir al-fatiha Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen r-Rahman r-Rahim Maliki yawm al-Din Iyaka na'abudu wa Iyaka nasta'in Ihdina al-Sirat al-Mustaqim Sirat al-Ladhina an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-Maghdubi alayhim Wala al-Dalim Amin, Amin, Amin. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma huwa ahlu. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma huwa ahlu. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma huwa ahlu. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yusifun wa salamun ala al-mursalina wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah Sayyidina Muhammadun Rasulullah. Allahumma ameen, ameen, ameen. Once again, thanks to all of you for watching our program today. We hope you can join us every day. 
7 p.m. to run to time, inshallah. Please uh, spread the word with others, to others, your family members, your relatives, your friends, other Muslims you know about the program, they can join us, inshallah. Remember the special programs coming up next week, Monday evening, the special majlis uh, for Arafat Day. Day of Arafat is on Monday coming, inshallah. And then on Tuesday, uh, Eid, Eid al-Adha, uh, our broadcast for the Eid program starts at 8.30 in the morning with uh, recitation of takbirat and announcements and so on. Uh, and, and then at about 9.30 or so we do our salah and then khutbah. So please join us uh, uh, and spend the morning with us for Eid. Uh, those, of, those of you who are able to come to Islam Forum, you do so inshallah. And uh, others in other cities, other countries, wherever you are throughout the world, you can join us on the live stream broadcast to pray Eid with us inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for so doing. So uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you always in the shade of his mercy. Until we meet again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.